Hi everyone, Mike here with another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'll be painting the Iron Golem from Massive Darkness. When I saw this guy, I immediately thought back to the cover of an old D&D module that I played years ago, The Lord of the Iron Fortress. I decided this would be the inspiration for my paint scheme. So as you can see, I've removed the golem from the base, and it's easy to do if you've never tried it. Just wiggle the blade of your hobby knife under the feet and it will eventually just lift off the base. This golem is going to get a custom base, but feel free to skip this part. It's pretty straightforward though, I'm going to be using some green stuff to create a simple dungeon floor. Now for the next part, I'll pretend that you don't know how to use green stuff and I'm going to explain every step. I've cut equal parts of the yellow and blue putty and I always wet my fingers before mixing it all together. Getting this stuff wet won't affect how it hardens at all. Next I'm flattening out the green stuff on the base and I'm trying to get it as flat as possible. I'm not worried about getting it perfect though, but this is after all the floor of a dungeon. Next I'm wetting my fingers again and smoothing all around the edge of the base. Now I'm using a regular kitchen knife to cut the tiles of the floor. You don't need to cut all the way to the bottom of the base, just make some neat rectangles on the floor. After that, I'm widening the lines a bit with a sculpting tool, which I'm repeatedly dipping in water. And the final step is to press a rock gently into the green stuff to create some texture. I've also seen people do this with a ball of aluminum foil. To attach the golem, I'm actually just going to press him into the green stuff. Once it hardens, that golem won't be going anywhere. After the green stuff is ready, I'm spraying the entire model with black primer. The Iron Golem is made entirely of metal, but I don't want to use just one color. To keep it visually interesting, I'm going to start off with a bronze color, and this is going to be used on any parts that look like they rotate. So as you can see, I'm painting the ball joints at the shoulder and hips, as well as the gears. I'll also add this to a few other random places, like these overlapping plates on the feet, and also the round studs on the left arm. The rest of the body is divided up into two main parts, armor plating and what I'll call the inner workings. The inner workings we painted with a dark steel color. I'm mixing roughly equal parts of bad and black and gunmetal, and then I'm going to paint everything that's under the armor plates. Next I'm going to paint the armor plating. I wanted a blue metallic color for this. I don't own one of those, but gunmetal mixes really well with other paints. So for this color I'll be mixing equal parts Cantor Blue from Games Workshop and gunmetal from Army Painter. That's all of the colors for the construct done, and next is the giant flanged mace. I figured that a golem being magical would take a long time to corrode, but its weapon probably isn't magical and might look rusty. So for the base color on the mace, I'll be using rough iron from Army Painter. Next I'll be using two different washes. The first is a custom wash that's three parts Null Noil, two parts Agrax Earthshade, and one part Drakenhof Nightshade. This is going over the mace and all of the armor plating. This wash is going to dull the metallic colors and make them look more aged and worn. Now for the rest of the model, I'll be using Null Oil Gloss. I wanted the inner workings to have a different looking texture. The glossy wash will make everything look like well-oiled machinery. So this is going over everything painted silver or bronze, as well as the entire left arm. Now 
Next, I'm gonna do a dry brush with Shining Silver. I'm not gonna do this all over the model. For the armor plates and flanged mace, I'm only brushing perpendicular to the edges to create an edge highlight. For the inner workings, I'm just doing a gentle dry brush downward over the details. Next, I want to do a bright orange for the vents on the chest and for the eyes. Iron golems are healed by fire damage, and some even do fire damage to anyone who attacks them. So it stands to reason there might be a magical furnace in there somewhere. I'm first painting the inside of the vents and the eyes with a mix of water and white paint to brighten them up. I'm then using a watered down blazing ink to create a bright orange color, though any orange or yellow wash will work fine. I later came back with a bit of fluorescent yellow and I put that on top of the orange and added a bit around the edges of the eyes and the vents. Now I want to add a bit of rust and rust stains to the armor and the mace. I've mixed these two paints with about twice as much water to make a wash. I'm then dabbing this on the rivets all around the armor. What I want is for it to settle around the bottom of the rivets. As for the mace, I'm adding this in between all the flanges and also around the round bits on the shaft, basically anywhere that moisture might collect and cause corrosion. I should have mentioned earlier that I'm starting with a darker color, Mornfang Brown. Once that's dried, I'm switching to Orange Rust from Secret Weapon. I'm adding this to the same areas, but I'm using less paint this time so that you can still see both colors of rust. That's the Golem done, and now I'm going to do the base. It'll be a pretty basic paint job for the base. I'm first going to base coat the whole thing with a couple layers of Mechanica Standard Grey. While I was waiting for that to dry, I painted all around the rim of the base with a darker grey. Now I'm going to add two washes to the base to give it some definition and color. First I'm using Agrax Earthshade and I'm making sure this goes not just over the floor but also in between all of the stones. With the green wash I'm just adding it in random patches to make it look like algae growing on the stone. Next I'm taking a couple of light grey colors and dry brushing it over the stones. First I'm using Dawnstone and this is going over the entire surface of the stone. Then I'm going to finish with Celestial Grey and I'm trying to just focus this on the edges of the stones. Once I'm done with that I'm spraying the whole thing with a matte varnish. And there you have it, the Iron Golem from Massive Darkness. This is also a perfect model for Summon Construct found in the 5th edition D&D book Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel and thank you to newest patron Peter Shogren. Also thank you to everyone who takes the time to subscribe and comment as well. I hope you all enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.